Hello, and welcome to Shaking and Sipping. This is the show where we shake up, or today stir a cocktail or other mixed drink, give it a sip, and talk a bit about its history and some variants. Now, we're continuing our quest to work through the IBA's list of official cocktails to see how those stack up. We recently completed Section 1, The Unforgettables. We are now beginning Section 2, The Contemporary Classics. And this week's Contemporary Classic, well-timed for its occurrence right near New Year's here, is the Bellini. Now, the Bellini's one where we have a pretty clear history on, and variants are pretty clear as well, so this should be a pretty simple episode history-wise. Uh, there's a place called Harry's Bar in Venice, unrelated to the other Harry's that we've discussed many times in earlier episodes, such as Craddock and Macalone. Um, this Harry's Bar it was run by Giuseppe Cipriani, um, and ended up turning into a chain. They're now quite a few of them. There's one in New York and Rome and, I don't know, other places. They were all owned by the Cipriani family until like 10 years ago or so when they had to sell them because of some tax evasion or something. I'll throw allegedly on, on there because I didn't research that deep, deeply, allegedly. Um, so anyway, this drink was something he created sometime between the mid-30s and the late 40s. The most common date you'll see online is 1948, which sounds fine. I can't really see where that date comes from, because some other people have other dates in the 30s or 40s, and no one seems to have a direct quote to someone claiming that's when it was made. It was certainly around by 1948, and Harry's Bar opened in 1931, so it was certainly after that. Sometime in that window, I'm fine with 1948. And apparently uh, Giuseppe just came up with this drink. It's a very simple drink. It is Prosecco and peach puree, or peach nectar, or some other sort of peach product. Uh, historically, apparently white peaches, um, though you can use other kinds of peaches as well. There's a little bit of controversy whether there was a spoonful of raspberry juice or raspberry syrup in the original, which apparently was there to add color. Um, some sources say that was in the original drink. Some sources say that was added when the drink began to be bottled sometime in the 80s, that then in the bottling process they added that to get the color right. I'm not going to add it today. I'm also not using white peaches, so we'll have a little more color anyway. As to the name of the drink, really clear, Bellini is an Italian, or was an Italian painter um, back in the 16th century, and apparently something about the color of the drink reminded uh, Cipriani of some elements of the painting. Depending on who you ask, it might have been someone's like cloak um, that had a similar pinkish hue. Also, it might have been a light source in a painting. Something like that. Um, IBA on this one doesn't give any history, of course, because they almost never do anymore. They do give three variants. They don't talk much about them, but they give just a list of three variants. Uh, one is called Tintoretto, um, which is another Italian painter from the 16th century, so that kind of makes sense. It's a different color, and so perhaps that color reminded someone sometime of uh, a Tintoretto painting. The other two are uh, the Puccini and the Rossini, which are, of course, uh, Italian opera composers from a couple uh, centuries later. I'm not sure where those names come from. Obviously, the drink doesn't look like an opera, because I don't even know what that would mean. Um, but we'll talk about all of those today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make sort of two and a half versions of the drink today. So I'm going to make a Bellini. I'm going to make a Tintoretto. But first, we're going to start off with something real special. This is the Bellstrada Bellini, pre-made. This was not very expensive, and it looks terrible. Um, so this is wine with natural peach flavor. Comes in at 5% by volume, um, which is seems a little low. Um, but I guess that works out. Um, but yeah, 5%. And we've got a real interesting ingredients list here. So we have white wine. Um, so it's not starting from a sparkling wine. They're adding the carbonation later. So some sort of still white wine. Water. Good. We needed that. Peach flavor. Sugar. Something called natural cloudifier. No idea what that means. I mean, it makes it cloudy. Good. Um, and then a red dye, citric acid, and carbonic acid, which is where we're getting our... If there's carbonation, I guess, but I don't think there is because it says to shake well. So I don't really know what's going on with this. Let's give it a shake. So 
So despite shaking well, I can see there's definitely still some uh, sediment here that hasn't redissolved. I can also see there is some carbonation in this. So I don't know if this is just going to explode when I open it or what, but it'll be an experience. And is this a screw top? Okay, they made it look like it was going to be like a champagne cork. It is a screw top. Oh, and it is not carbonated. That was just liquid that we were, or just air that we were uh, uh, aerating. All right, the Bellastrada Bellini. Made in Germany, apparently. Okay, it smells peach adjacent. A um, little bit of, yeah, wine and peach. That is kind of what it smells like. I don't know that it smells like Prosecco and peach. It smells more like, like a Vino Verde and peach. <laughs> that is dreadful. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Um, okay, let me process. Yeah, so it's a really interesting flavor experience. First of all, it is still, but also carbonated. Like it has just a very tiny amount of carbonation, I guess from dissolved carbonic acid. Um, and so it reads like it's carbonated, but there aren't really bubbles that you experience, which is weird. It starts off pretty sharp. You get this sort of sharp wine taste, but then immediately you get too much sweetness at the same time. So it's somehow harsh and not sweet, and then too sweet at the same time, which then sort of falls away to give you the peach flavor, which isn't quite right. Yeah, you end on this, well, not quite end, we aren't there yet. The big middle of the drink is peaches, but peach flavor it tastes like I don't know, cooked peaches that you've taken just the main component of cooked peaches and put that into the drink rather than the whole, you know, range of flavor that a stone fruit has. Um, and then it ends with a kind of weird aftertaste that sort of sour wine. I don't know what that note is. Okay, this is pretty dreadful. This, um... Luckily it has a screw top, so I don't need to commit to drinking all of this, um, and maybe we'll decide not to drink it. Um, we shall see. Uh, this is a 2 out of 10. Do not buy this product. Alright, now we're going to make a proper Bellini. Um, I'm going to use IBA spec sort of ingredients and proportions. I'm not going to use the IBA method. The IBA method doesn't really make any sense to me as written. So it says to mix this in a mixing glass over ice, and then it just says pour into your chilled flute. So I, I guess not even strained, they want there to be just big ice cubes in this drink. And it's a drink that starts with two ingredients straight out of the fridge that are cold. I, I don't I don't need ice in this drink. I don't even need a mixing glass for this this drink. So we're not gonna use one. Uh, we're gonna start off with some peach puree. These are some uh, local Washington state uh, frozen peaches that I have blended. And of this, we're looking for about 50 milliliters. So that is um, one and two thirds ounces. We're just going to directly add that into our chilled flute. Then we're going to open up our Prosecco. I'm just using La Marca here, which is a fairly cheap, not the you know bottom of the line Prosecco, but not a very high-end one. I don't think it's needed for this drink, but if you feel inclined, go ahead and do that. You can also make this with other sparkling wines. Some people make it with champagne and call it a Bellini Royale or other names like that. Do whatever works for you. All right, and then of this, we want 100 milliliters. So that is going to be three full ounces plus a third of an ounce. I'm 
I'm not sure why you'd really measure this. Just pour it into the glass and it'll be fine. But we're gonna try to be accurate. That was roughly 60 milliliters. So we want another 40 milliliters, give or take. But really, just eyeball this. Don't measure this, this drink. There's no reason to. just going to give that a light stir. And this is an IBA spec-ish Bellini. Okay, a little too much peach. The measuring is difficult with the foaming um, Prosecco, so Let's just add some extra here, like we should have done if we eyeballed it. All right, with a bit more Prosecco. It's good, it's interesting. Um, Proseccos have, um, not all, but a lot, especially this one, have a really strong sort of green apple character to it. And I'm definitely getting that. And so the peach and apple sort of together is interesting. It doesn't really read, I don't really read any alcohol in this. I'm not really reading this as wine and peaches. I'm reading this as some sort of apple peach thing that just has a little bit of a tang to it. Yeah, it's sort of right at the front, it's dry. It doesn't really taste of anything. And then you go into that slightly sour apple place, and then you end on peaches. Um, a little bit of acidity, a little bit of sweetness, and then that, you know, that peach character. I like it. Um, this isn't, you know, my kind of drink really, but I think you could have a worse drink at a New Year's party for sure, or some similar event where you want to pass around some bubbles, but you either want to make the cheap stuff palatable, or you just want something more exciting than just opening a bottle. I'm not against this. Then as I mentioned earlier, there are three variants of the drink listed at the IBA's website. Um, first one is the Puccini, which you sub um, fresh mandarin orange juice for the peach nectar. Second one, and the only one that I can see actually like people making and other people talking about um, other than the IBA's website is the Rossini. Um, this one uses uh, strawberry puree or strawberry juice in place of the peach pu pu puree. Sounds interesting. And then finally the Tintoretto, which is what I'm going to make for you today. So the Tintoretto, we're swapping in pomegranate juice. And proportions are exactly the same. So we want 50 milliliters, one and two thirds ounces of pomegranate juice. And I'm not going to bother trying to measure it this time. We're just going to add some Prosecco. But we're looking for roughly double that amount, roughly 100 milliliters of Prosecco. Which should be most of my glass here. I'll let that settle for just a minute and then I'll give it a quick stir. I don't think it's really necessary when you're pouring something with bubbles on top of juice. It, it'll do a pretty decent job of just dealing with it, but we'll give it a stir to be safe. And that is the Tin Toretto. Nose is kind of muted. I get the Prosecco. I get an almost yeasty wine note. A little bit of sweetness. I don't really get pomegranate. Oh, but I do on the palate. It's mostly pom pomegranate. Pomegranate is a quite, um, quite assertive juice to have that amount in here. Yeah, I think that's very good if you like pomegranate juice quite a bit, and I do. Um, 
No interesting flavor notes to write home about, though. It tastes like if you took pomegranate juice and then you carbonated it and added just a little extra zing to it, a slightly brighter note than the deep, dark pomegranate note. This is really tasty. This would actually be probably my pick of the three we had today. Because um, I really like pomegranate juice and this is slightly boozy, slightly bright pomegranate juice. So I'd recommend this as well if you need uh, an interesting twist on bubbles or you want to stretch some not so uh, fancy Prosecco or sparkling white, um, throw some pomegranate juice in it. Why not? All right, well, thanks so much for coming along this week on our Bellini adventure. Not the most interesting episode in terms of history or tasting notes or variants, because it's just pretty much sparkling wine with a bit of fruit in it. Lovely stuff, but we will have some more interesting episodes coming up as we work through the contemporary classics. Uh, please do the YouTube stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe, watch other videos, etc. Uh, if Twitter still exists, you can follow on Twitter at shaking underscore sipping, where I will tell you um, what we're up to when we do things like IBA in real life, which is most weeks when I go to a local sample cocktail bar the day after the video comes out, and then post a blog entry about uh, how they made the cocktail, variants, if they make it often, etc. We're not going to be doing that this week because this is Prosecco with fruit in it. I'm not going to uh, go to a cocktail bar to order that. So that shall return uh, hopefully for next week's episode. In the, in, in the meantime, you can visit the blog at shakingandsipping.com where we'll have a write-up on this and each other drink that we cover. And we'll be back next week with the next drink on the IBA's list. Until then, happy sipping. Cheers.